I spent the last couple of years massively ramping up our game in terms of music marketing. We've been releasing music since the 80s, varying degrees of what you might call success, and the music industry has utterly changed over and over again during that time. Formats have come and gone, the internet has arrived and changed and evolved, so how you do music and how you distribute music has changed incredibly. So the last couple of years I've paid attention to a lot of music marketing gurus, people whose job it is to understand these things and who have a strong online presence, particularly on YouTube, sharing how you're meant to do things, particularly around social media. So people like Damien Keys and the Damien Keys Music Business Academy, which I'm a member of. There's Burstimo, who are music marketers who specialize in music rather than other aspects of marketing. There's Adam Ivey, there's Muse Formation, Jesse Cannon, and there's a stack of others, most of whom copy those people. And here and there, they disagree with each other, which is fine, they're humans and they have different perspectives. Jesse Cannon in particular uh, disagrees with Damien Keyes about Facebook advertising, for example. But anyway, like I said, I've tried a lot of different things, various types of advertising, various approaches to social media, various patterns of release timing. I've played with different understandings of the various social media, Instagram and TikTok and YouTube shorts and so on. They evolve over time so I have adapted as they have evolved following the guidance from the aforementioned people who keep a close eye on these things and sometimes actually interview workers from these organisations to kind of get a bit of direct insight which is useful. And a conclusion I've come to that applies only to secret archives of the Vatican and may not apply to anybody else at all is that nearly everything really doesn't work. It applies to people who make mainstream genre music or specific named niche genres. So if you make any kind of rock or pop or hip hop or R&B or country or classical, a lot of these guys have got great advice that may well help you get your music before prospective fans and more important, turn them into true followers who will actually engage with you and buy into your your story, your journey. In some ways, it's probably even easier if you make a micro niche style of music. So if you make Mexican grindcore or outlaw country or a specific subgenre of black metal, there will be defined communities out there who probably don't have enough music coming their way to keep them happy. So if you can make contact with them through targeted advertising, through blogs and magazines and specific radio shows and Spotify playlists and so on, you've actually got a very good chance, perhaps a better chance than people who make a, a very broad mainstream genre. What I have concluded after two years of trying everything, varying degrees of success, is that if you make music that does not fit into a genre according to industry lists of genres, you have very little chance because nobody can place it anywhere. Now Spotify, we were told, was doing playlists based on mood and things like that. Now that was a interesting idea because then the genre became a little bit less important if you fitted a particular mood or vibe, they could put you in there. Great. In reality, all of those mood playlists are still full of absolute mainstream pap music. It's a nice idea that in reality, I don't think has quite happened. So if you make music that can't be labelled very easily, or it requires 50 words to label it rather than the two that all the online sites actually require, life is difficult. Now, some of these aforementioned gurus have actually presented me with some very, very useful and good ideas that have definitely improved a lot of what we've done. Now, social media presence is 100% better than it was. Our various pages and sites online all look much better the artistic side of our presentation is much better. Our branding is much more consistent. At the same time, of course, we've improved the music. That happens as you go on anyway, To hopefully. But I've never had doubts about the quality of the music. It's always been, how do I get it in front of people out there who are open-minded and who have multiple musical interests and are therefore open to the idea of this non-genre, multi-genre, hard to define music. And some of these ideas have helped with that. They've just made it a little bit more accessible. But at the end of the day, 
it's it's an incredibly hard battle. Now, because we don't fit into the way everything's meant to work, all the release schedules that they, these people suggest make no difference one way or the other to us. So some of these guys will say four singles a year, maybe batch them up into an album at some point. A lot of them kind of say, put a single out about every six weeks. And then if you think you've developed your relationship with your fans enough that they might buy an EP or an album or listen to or stream it, then then do that. So we've tried extremes. We've tried putting stuff out every few days. We've tried putting stuff out at a couple of month intervals with all the various marketing plans that these people suggest. And quite frankly, none of it makes any difference one way or the other. If we put things out a week apart or we put things out two months apart, we will get exactly the same results. And whether something is successful by our standards or ignored seems to be down to factors that got nothing to do with release schedule and nothing to do with all this frenetic activity that is suggested we should all be doing. The one thing that does seem to have some impact is an ongoing, consistent social media presence on whichever one is still sharing content with more than a tiny percentage of followers. So at the time I'm recording this, Instagram is declining a little bit, TikTok is doing great, and YouTube Shorts is on the up and up. But you know, ask me in three weeks, that might have changed. Consistency on these platforms does seem to get some small result, but at the end of the day, it appears to be utterly and totally random. And on that basis, we produce a lot of music. In the old music industry, it would have been, forget it, you record 100 tunes, we'll put two of them out. So you end up with 98 decent tunes sitting there doing nothing. And I, I don't want to live in that world. I don't want to work that way. So I think I've come to the point where anything that I create that I think is of good enough quality, I'm putting it out there. So I'm recording this at the beginning of December 2022. And I already have a vast amount of music lined up for release between now and April 23. vast majority of it has been uploaded to our distributor and the only thing I'm trying to figure out is spreading it out appropriately so that I've actually got time to do some of the social media stuff. Unfortunately, one of the key things that it's always worth having a go at is getting onto Spotify playlists. And you probably need, in reality, a kind of a couple of weeks lead time to put your pitch in and hope that they decide to run with your tune and the complication there when you're producing a lot of music is you have to look ahead over the next several weeks and think which ones of these are the most likely to get picked up for a playlist because they will only look at one at a time you, you can't present six tracks you can only present one and it's only when that goes live you can then present the next track which is a real pain yeah difficult choices to make which ones do i present for for playlists the reality of that, though, is that the chances of you actually getting picked up for a playlist is negligible. Now, we've had one, one tune in 2022, which was released in January. It went on to an editorial playlist in April, and we've just had the roundup of the year from Spotify, and it's had 96,500 streams, which it's probably earned us about £50, something like that. And it cost me an awful lot more than that to do all the promotion and make the video and all the stuff, so, you know we're not in it for the money. So anyway, in conclusion, there is all this advice out there. And if you make normal everyday music, great, a load of it is good. Get in there, there's stuff to learn from these guys, but do not take it as a sacred scripture, what they say. It's their experience and their observations and they are learning it probably half a step ahead of most of the musicians that they advise. And if you're in a micro genre, but one that's got a name and that you can define, yes, seriously, they can, they can help you find your audience but if you're like us whose music mixes multiple genres but doesn't fit into any of them so you can't call it by any of those names if it has no name um what these guys share with you will have some use what you'll do will be better but they actually in my humble opinion have no answer for how we achieve commonly accepted standards of success i.e a good number of streams or sales, or downloads.